place has to go beyond that. He has earned that reputation. Now he's on that top rope. And he was aiming with that elbow. It took a little bit too long for him to climb those ropes. But if that elbow would have landed, we may have had a new TV champion. So Taylor now on top of Buddy Roberts. One blow after another as they flash the face of Buddy Roberts. That's Michael Hayes. As Michael Hayes has come down to ringside and they're battling Taylor's fighting both Freebirds. Michael Hayes down at ringside. The Freebirds, I'll tell you, they're just, they can't stand it. They're always, always one on one. That's two on one. The Freebirds are double teaming tactics. But there's a big cowboy on his way in the ring. There's a 300 pounder. And he's got a right hand the size of a hand. And he knows how to throw it. He's had plenty of years of experience. And bam, bam. That's three on two, Pete. The three on two, the Freebirds. They hate Cowboy Bill Watts. The Freebirds are at full strength. All three Freebirds. Terry Gordy, Michael Hayes, and look at the Cowboy battle as he sends Terry Gordy in retreat. He's taking the battle right on Michael Hayes. Now Buddy Roberts trying to sneak up. There's the Freebirds in full strength. And we've got Chavo Guerrero down at ring. But we've got Taylor watching Chavo against the army of the Freebirds. They've shown the Freebirds they're not going to take any more backward steps. The Cowboy, Terry Taylor, Chavo Guerrero, what a trio. They say the Freebirds are the greatest six-man team in the world today. But there's three right there in the ring. This crowd, another great crowd is standing. And we don't want to go away from here, Pete, because this situation right here is explosive. So there you're looking at the fabulous Freebirds who made for one of the first time since invading Universal Wrestling Federation has been sent into a quick retreat. As Michael Hayes, look at the signs as the wrestling fans are making signs and making their chanting across the Coliseum, Christy Sissy. He hates that. You know, he's my color uh, analyst on our UWF program quite often, and he gets beside himself. He's like a child. When they, when a, you know, he cannot stand that whatsoever. If you want to rattle Michael Hayes, then just call him a sissy. Christy, sissy, get, sissy. get your ass in it. The Cowboy Bill Watts issuing the challenge for the Freebirds to come inside the ropes. Now, one of the matches scheduled on tonight's card, Jim, Cowboy Bill Watts and Chavo Guerrero against Michael Hayes and Terry Gordy. We have yet to see the official verdict on the Buddy Roberts. Jerry Taylor match. I got to think that they disqualified Roberts because Hayes jumped in the ring. That's an automatic disqualification. But the big cowboy is inside of the front of the ring. Chavo's back there. You know what kind of temper he's got, Pete. It just takes him about that long to get mad. Michael Hayes. I'll tell you what, the people really want to get to Michael right now. They start yelling sissy. The louder they yell it, and the more often, the more the more out of sorts he gets. Look at him. Listen to the crowd. He's standing up everywhere, chanting Chris and Sissy as Cowboy Bill Watts takes advantage of Michael Hayes coming in the ring as we've got the six ingredients in that two-ring six-man tag war. But this is still an unscheduled match as everything is busted loose since Michael Hayes interfered on the championship match between Terry Taylor and Buddy Roberts. As you see, both Freebirds being thrown against each other and in the ring, Chavo, Terry Taylor, and Bill Watts remain. Well, the crowd loves it here at the Coliseum. And this thing, folks, when you get all six of them with two rings, you'll have two matches going on at one time. What a card and what a battle it's going to be on August the 8th. Well, I'll tell you, that's why I'm coming down on the 7th. I'm not going to miss anything. I'm coming in down a day early for this one. Well, outside the ring, we still see the Freebirds as they do. Three of us, let's get it up. Bill Watts had something to say. Terry Gordy tried to stop the Cowboy from talking about it. Look at Bill Watts as he turns into Terry Gordy because Bill Watts has a special grudge against Terry Gordy 
with that spike. And watch this. He just put Terry just thumb all on the Oriental spike right at Terry Gordy. And Gordy went all the way outside. And Terry Tanner, Cameron, Buddy Roberts, and Michael Hayes. Oh, P.S. P.S. is outside. Now it's Chavo as he's trying to find a place to send Buddy Roberts. And they found a good place to send him right into the big pair of boots owned by Cowboy Bill Watt. The size 13 Triple E buried into the stomach. You know, I know that we need to take a station break. I know we need, we're, we, we need to break from here. But I hate to leave people because the thing is it's, it's, it's so unpredictable. It's just pandemonium here in Houston, Texas at the Coliseum. That's Michael Hayes trying to recuperate from the encounter he just experienced with Watts, Chauvel, and Terry Taylor. He's the general of the Fabulous Freebirds. And as Terry Gordy now in the ring, as we're trying to see if Tommy Gilbert is trying to get the tag team event that's scheduled tonight, maybe he's trying to get that underway. But listen to this crowd, Jim. Chrissy Sissy from every corner of the Coliseum there, standing and chanting. Well, what we got here is a six-man tag match, Pete. That's all we have. I don't think anybody's going to lose. Gordy now steps into the pistol watch by dropping by Taylor as Terry Bam Bam Gordy, the Universal Wrestling Federation heavyweight champion. Of course, his title's not on the line in a tag match like this. But I tell you what is the Fabulous Freebirds' reputation. Exactly right. And their egos are bigger than any title belts known to mankind. So it was going to be, anyway, a six-man, uh, a regular tag team match. But it's going to be now a six-man. I tell you, this is a preview of what we're going to see on August the 8th. This is a bonus here on 39 Gold. I think Tommy Gilbert made the wise choice by just making it a sixth man right there because I think he had a lot of difficulty in clearing the ring. Well, down at ringside, it looked like Terry Taylor was tripped. We didn't see what happened. We saw Taylor fall to the mat, and the fans are claiming that he was his boot was grabbed by one of the Freebirds. But right now, Michael Hayes, as the Freebirds start to do what they do best, and that is tag team action. You know, Pete, I don't think we don't have a whole lot more time left in the program. That's one of the unfortunate things about watching it on television. I wish everybody could be here because we're just about out of time. As you see, the main man, the UWF heavyweight champion, all 295, Terry Bam Bam Gordy. Gordy now driving Terry Taylor's face right into the turnbuckle. As Terry Taylor trying to crawl his way across the ring, he's got two super partners in Chavo Guerrero and Cowboy Bill Watt. And with the Freebirds using their tag team tactics, you sure better have some teamwork on the other side as well. You've got to, you're beat. And the Freebirds now throw Taylor, and Taylor went all the way out in into that steel railing. And look at Bam Bam. Oh, goodness gracious. H Taylor's head would just crack, and I mean, we're quite a ways away from here, but you can hear it crack. See, that's where the Freebirds are at their best. They're at their best there. They they separate you. They they like a, taking a lamb away from the pack. They they separate you in their strength and numbers. Look at Michael Strutt, Michael Hayes, the flamboyant, inspirational leader of the Freebirds. There's this big hammer, Bam Bam Gordy, and. This is, I don't know if Terry Taylor's even going to be able to continue. Well, he's come back in the ring. I'll tell you, it shows what Terry Taylor's made of. He's a tough young man. Double tough young man is Terry Taylor. And neck breaker. There again, Pete, going back to work on that neck. We talked about it. But there's no doubt about it that the Freebirds symbolize the top in tag team action. You may not agree with the tactics or their personalities, but they are considered by many as the best six-man tag team in professional wrestling today. Taylor was reversed it, and that's a big, big man in Terry Gordy to reverse it with. But Michael Hayes, they're quick. They do not want to give Taylor an opportunity to tag a fresh partner. 
two and almost three. As Michael Hayes now challenging the speed on which Tommy Gilbert counted Taylor's shoulders to the mat. But Michael Hayes is never at a loss for words. He just, no, that's, a, that's right. He got just about as close as you could get without getting a three count. And Taylor has really been hammered and it's a, it's a, a great testimonial to the mental and physical toughness of Terry Taylor. That he's still in there fighting and holding his own and trying to keep from getting pinned here so he can get to the corner, make that tag. That's exactly what he has to do. He's got Chavo Guerrero and the big cowboy in the corner waiting on him, but the Freebirds have got the ring cut in half. Taylor's in their side of the field, and they are masters of the six-man strategy, and there is an art to it. Michael Hayes reminds me of a killer shark. When he smells blood, he becomes that much more vicious because they know that they got Taylor on the ropes, and if they can keep Taylor away from the corner and continue to tag in and out and work over Terry Taylor, I don't care how much punishment Terry Taylor can take, eventually they're going to win. But Taylor that time is now going to try to take advantage of the opportunity and he's crawling towards the corner. And as he makes the tag, in comes Bill Watt. But Tommy Gilbert now challenging the he, right for Watt to be in the it. ring. He didn't see it. The Freebirds had him, had him blocked. He didn't see it. But it didn't make any difference. They're all in there. And we've got all six men in the ring. And Hayes into the ropes. And a double. Whammy by Watson Taylor. Now Terry Gordy. Oh, there's two big ones there, Pete. Look at them. They're both 300 pounds. Gordy. As Watts tried to avoid Terry Gordy when crashing into Terry Taylor. Chavo Guerrero and Buddy Roberts way out on the floor fighting. Taylor's going to the concrete. They're holding Watts. They're trying to get him. Watts moved out of the way and Bam Bam came down on Michael Hayes. Uh-oh. The Cowboys putting on the nuts. The Cowboys putting on the nuts. Good night, Irene. The Cowboys got the nuts on. And right now, he's making sure that he's showing Terry Gordy and Buddy Roberts that he's got them on because he knows what to do once they come on that big right fist to his, that powerful right that he throws so well. In comes Gordy, and Bill Watts stops the big free bird right in his track. Look at Watts, that right hand. Boom! So, Cowboy Bill Watts. Making sure that the Freebirds read his message loud and clear. They want to start a feud with Bill Watts. He's ready to take it right to him. And Terry Taylor now. And Michael Hayes, a close-up shot of Watts finishing him off. But the Freebirds are not giving up. They're coming right back in the ring. This is a street fight, and that's what you're going to see on the 8th because we'll have all six of these men, and we'll have two rings. The bell continues to sound, referee Tommy Gilbert trying to get control, but I don't know if he can get these six men under control. Watts challenging the Freebird to come back in the ring. He's got Chavo on one side of him, Terry Taylor on the other, as the fabulous Freebird, Michael Hayes, Buddy Roberts, and Terry Bam Bam Gordy. Now they realize just what they may have started with Bill Watts. And Gordy's got a deep laceration. And I mean, he's been busted open in the head. You can bet, you can bet that that six man, look at Gordy. You can bet on August the 8th that it's gonna be one battle that you're not soon gonna forget with two rings. Look there, Gordy says you're gonna pay for it. The brass knucks, the Freebirds are cornered. And when they're cornered, Pete, they're deadly. And when the Freebirds are at their peak, when they talk, Fans better listen because they've set their sight on Cowboy Bill Watts, Chavo Guerrero, and Terry Taylor. And we'll be back with more exciting wrestling. Ladies action. and gentlemen, the winner is Chavo Guerrero. Well, that's just Terry Taylor and Cowboy Bill Watts. Watts. Referee Tommy Gilbert has a one in the match to Chavo Guerrero, Terry Taylor, and Cowboy Bill Watts. And we have the winner. And we'll be back now with after an important message. Just 
fight, you can play any broken fall, you can lay. We hope you enjoy the rest of the day. Since the first midget wrestlers I ever saw, and that was at a, back in the 1930s, I have been a fan of midget wrestlers. They're awfully entertaining. I was looking while they were, while they were, while Tommy Gilbert was down on one knee uh, checking them out there. Those small, that's one of the smaller pair of cowboy boots I, I've seen in quite some time there, Paul. Well, they're not, not exactly Texas size. No, they're sure not. No. But I'll tell you, you say the, they are entertaining. These are also athletes who sure are, are capable of uh, inflicting uh, very, very strong uh, moves against even accomplished wrestlers. Certainly are. And, you know, I've always been impressed with Cowboy Lang's conditioning. He's got a very well develop back and arm. He works out. He works out hard and he's a strong. He has to work out because you take these men comparatively. They are of equal weight, equal size, so it hurts just as much when they get a headlock as if I should get a headlock on you. And exactly you right. Equal size. Some fans may remember that at one time Lord Littlebrook uh, was challenged by Dan Lovett who was a sports uh, caster for uh, radio station KTRH 740 on the dial and Lovett wanted to wrestle him and I finally got a commitment from Lord Littlebrook that he would not hurt Dan Lovett and Lovett laughed when he when he heard that I had uh, actually gotten this commitment because Lovett was not a wrestler and he was not an athlete and he thought that because Littlebrook was a midget he would have absolutely no problem in just uh, holding him down to the mat and beating him. Well, <laughs> he learned <laughs> differently. 
And Wells Twombly, who had been a sports writer for the Houston Chronicle and who was the instigator of the challenge, was, uh, was the referee in the ring. But I want to tell you that Lord Littlebrook surprised Lovett and turned him upside down, inside out, and as they say, every way but loose. And Lovett went down to the dressing room and became rather ill after it was all over. So he found that it was a lot of energy. But Littlebrook was uh, true to his promise. He said he wouldn't hurt him, and he, he didn't. He uh, did, however, teach him a little respect. Needless to say, uh, I would guess there was no return match signed after that no, situation. No. There hasn't been another one of that kind, and I never heard of another one anywhere else in, in the country. But I give Dan Lovett a lot of credit because he um, took a chance. He, he stepped into something in which he was inexperienced and um, learned sports firsthand. When I was officiating uh, pro wrestling matches, I would I'd much prefer to do a full-size match anytime <laughs> as the midgets they're so unpredictable and they get you in some positions that you just don't know you know you're just you're not accustomed to you know they get you in situations that you just you don't see that often it's right. just hard to react and it's like wrestling a girls match you, you can't win you, you, if you're refereeing you're in exactly you're right. in trouble head scissor and those short legs are capable of some great pressure because of the leverage that they offer to the man that's using it. And Littlebrook, with his head stuck through there and his nose down firmly against that canvas, is not really in a, a good way. Still a head scissor, the turnover could get a count, but it didn't. Referee Tom Gilbert saw the other side of uh, Littlebrook and decided that the... Um, he, he decided that the whole the shoulders were up I I was disturbed there as I was trying to talk about uh, Lang because in the escape from the hold why Littlebrook uh, flailed his arms in all directions so he's claiming the victory now as Cowboy Lang is on the Coliseum concrete and the um, there is the his lordship in behind the Cowboy with a reverse chin lock and Tom Gilbert checking on everything, looking around to make certain. Reverse chin, and there's a nice escape. And you saw as he came out of that, he took that arm right along with him by the very turn of his head. And he managed to, um, to turn right into the arm and to take him down with a hammerlock. This is more important to Lang that the drop kick and you might say he didn't have very far to go to and Little Brooks in trouble and I, I don't know it almost looked like a three count that time but uh, it was close it Jim, I, 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 I think not it the was close was in a, I, like I said, 15 minutes have the curious gone position by there. and they are I, I'm, I'm wondering what Littlebrook has got to complain about, or should we say that he's going to find something to complain about no matter what it is? I think that's, right. I think <laughs> that's his style that's because his style. he figures he can keep the referee in Oh, now look at trouble. it. Yeah. Like he's going to show down here. Lord Littlebrook lulls you into that false sense of security with that sleepish grin, and then all of a sudden he turns it right back on. And oh, oh, well, that time he didn't get exactly get turned on. He, sure he got turned into. He slammed right in there. And here is Cowboy Lang up and, oh, oh, he may have found the weak spot in Lord Littlebrook. And, and that back slam can turn into a victory here for Cowboy Lang. It's the best he's been able to bounce him, but the foot in the face is a good answer. Sure is, and Lord Littlebrook turn it on out of Cowboy Lang, and the action is fast. And he's got his shoulders down, and there it is. So it 
goes. The victory goes to Cowboy Lang, who won in two ways. He got the his lordship's shoulders down, and he got his hat back. Not a bad deal for a cowboy. Not a bad day's work. Federation. I'm Jim Ross. I'll be your host for the next 60 minutes. Freebird Michael P.S. Hayes will provide the color commentary, ladies and gentlemen. And we've just seen some exciting footage from last week and what I term as the most physically intense battle between two of the biggest men in pro wrestling, Hacksaw Duggan and the one-man gang. Undoubtedly, and it's, it's not over yet for sure. But you know what? Last week, we were ripped off that maniac. You know, they didn't make him quit wrestling. Uh, he didn't retire. They made him quit wrestling. That's what happened because he's a maniac. Bill Watts comes out there with a ball bat. Then Buddy beats Terry Taylor. Then they change it, give the title back to Terry Taylor. I'll tell you what, you're pushing us a little bit too far. But I'm going to let it go for right now because we've got a lot of things coming up. We're premiering our follow-up hit single from Bad Street USA to our new single, The Boys Are Back in Town. We were lucky enough and nice enough to let the cameras come to the studio and let you people see how it was recorded with Ricky Medlock, Ricky Phillips, Jimmy Papa. And on top of that, we've got a feature on uh, Dark Journey and Missy. I had, and, I had a case to be with them last week, both those ladies, obviously. And, uh, oh, I guess very, you think you're lucky, don't you? Well, it was, it was a very good duty, I will say. And yeah, did you tell her to quit calling me, Dark Journey? No, I didn't mention that. We also will have the sheep herders in this program. And Mike, let's address something else. Cowboy Bill Watts and a mystery partner against the free birds in this hour. Yeah, you know why his mystery partner? Because he can't find nobody. We got rid of Dr. Death. Ted DiBiase knew that we got Dr. Death, but we were going for him. So he's running high tailed. He's scared. They're talking about finding us and suspending us for what we did. Hey, why are you going to suspend us? You scared? Huh? You scared of the boys from Bad Street? Because we are back in town. Nobody messes with Bam Bam, the Universal Heavyweight Champion. Nobody messes with the birds. I'm still ticked off about Buddy's ripoff. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, we'll address these situations and many more uh, concerning the Universal Wrestling Federation as this hour progresses. But now, let's go to ring announcer Mike Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing 225 pounds from Vicksburg, Mississippi, Ken Massey. something up his sleeve because the man is not going to take the humiliation that was dealt out to him. Watch ran his rushes off. Of course he can't run us off. I said that from the beginning. Good move by Massey. Sting shot him off and Massey went right back to the headlock. You know, I got to give it to Ken Massey. He's another one of those guys. That... Good backward suplex. That's a way to get out of that headlock. Another one of those guys that comes out here and tries and sometimes he doesn't always win, but he got a victory in his hometown, Vicksburg, Mississippi. Of course, we were there in the main event and sold it out. Good body slam by Sting. But it just goes to show you, if you keep trying and keep pursuing, you might get it. Suplex, I don't think he's going to get no win this time. We're seeing a lot of new things from Sting, the Blade Runner. That's what I'm saying. Eddie might have just had him training all last week. A lot of wrestling moves. Look at that, a drop kick. 
You see that? Eddie Gilbert is up to something. He doesn't lay quiet unless he's doing something. And he's teaching this guy more wrestling moves. Good clothesline. You see, combine that power with wrestling. I don't care how much you can bench press, how much you can squat, it's the wrestler. And it's the best wrestler that'll win. Uh-oh, he's going to press slam him. Boom! Dropped him right on the gut. I think Massey's had it. He's tremendously strong. Blade Runner Sting. Off the ropes. Good press. No need to even hook the leg. One, two, three. That's it. A very impressive victory for Sting. Hot stuff Eddie Gilbert has sent him to school. He looks like he's graduated here on the Universal Wrestling Federation. There you see Hot Stuff and Sting. And ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back with Chavo Guerrero in action after this. Proudly from El Paso, Texas, is Chavo Guerrero. It'll be. He yeah. might be proud, but I would be proud to be from Libya and say that I was my country was ran by Omar Gaddafi. In the from El Paso, Texas, the 227 pounds, Chavo Guerrero. One fall, the 10-minute time limit. Don't forget now, ladies and gentlemen, coming up later in the hour, I'll file a special report on the Dark Journey Missy Hyatt situation. Well, especially after last week. That was a very enjoyable couple of days. Yeah, I I'll bet say. it was for you. You remind me of that type of, type of guy. But, you know, that was a great match that was going on. I don't know that they should have been disqualified, Hollywood John Tatum and Jack Victory. Just when they had the Fantastics going, the referee disqualified the match. We could have had a title change. Then Dark Journey and the Missing Link come in there, and there's nothing done. Nobody mentions a suspension, a fine, or nothing. They come down. They had no business being there. And she still ain't got no business calling me. Now, either you tell her about it or I'll go tell her about it. Chavo, Good move. He's quick. He's lightning quick. Side headlocks now executed by Chavo Guerrero. We saw Chavo here last week against Gustavo Mendoza in a very impressive victory. He's well, up against a much bigger man this week in the he, Libyan, quite he, obviously. He sure is. He beat one foreigner last week. See what he can do this week. Good turn buckle by the Libyan. Good high backdrop. This Libyan has a lot of talent. Good elbow. Going for the pin. Not hooking the leg. Not hooking the leg. See, Gaddafi, don't he don't train him right. Forearm smashed across the back. At least he is staying to the back. That backdrop had to hurt Chavo along with the turnbuckle. He's got him back in the corner. Forearm smashed across the chest. Go for the pin, man. Go for the pin. Get your man on the mat and keep him down. Another good forearm smash. Uh-oh. Guerrero, Guerrero turn it around. Good. Reversing it. What a forearm uppercut. Boom. I think that's to the throat, though. Did you see the spit come out of his mouth? And what a monkey flip. A 275-pound man. And now he's going to fight fire with fire. See that? Here comes that Latin temper. He should be the last guy to talk about fines and suspensions. As far as I'm concerned. Hey, stop. Now there's a closed right hand. Totally illegal. And what is Tommy Gilbert doing about it? Not one thing. There's that side kick again. Right to the solar plexus. There's no air left in that big man. He's climbing to the top. With the buggy flip. The Libyan charged him. Guerrero is waiting. There it is. Reverse cradle with the legs on top. He's got him hooked. I think he pulled the trucks. I think he pulled the drugs, Jim Ross. I don't think so. I believe so. I wish we could look at that again. I don't think it was necessary, but I think he pulled the drugs to get the victory. El Paso's finest Chavo Guerrero with a victory, and we'll have that special report on Dark Journey and Missy Hyatt when we come back from this from UWN. Hour. I'm here with Dark Journey, and we're going to talk about uh, some situations that are, have become very important in the career of Dark Journey. And first of all, I want to congratulate you on taking care of Lady Maxine. Lady Maxine no longer in the Universal Wrestling Federation. That's right. I, I actually, I congratulate myself. Uh, without the help of anyone at the time, I didn't have the missing link with me. And obviously, I ran her off. She's gone. 
I'm really proud of myself about that. All right, the key thing here is that you, you took care of your business by yourself. That's right, all by myself. I didn't need anybody's help. I told her that from the beginning. Well, ladies and gentlemen, just a few weeks ago here in the Universal Wrestling Federation, another lady made her appearance on our program. And apparently Jack Victory's phone call to John Tatum resulted in the footage that we're just about to see. Let's go now back in time a few weeks and see the uh, debut of Missy Hyatt and Hollywood John. We're seeing some bodies running by here, ladies and gentlemen, just moments ago. There's Hollywood John Tatum, and he took off his boot, and he's working over the missing link, Jack Victory and Hollywood John Tatum. That's and Missy, Missy Hyatt. Hyatt. That's yes. The link is down. The link is down, and they're working on over. Dark Journey's come to the aid of her man. Well, look at that. She's trying to get Tatum off of the missing link who's worked over. Now look at both men. Missy Hyatt with that goosey purse. With that Gucci purse. Oh! Man, she hit her right in the face with a purse. And Dark Journey is limp. And the come on, and, and the one man. Here comes the missing link back in the ring and they're scattering. It's sickening. Two men and a woman. They came to get Dark Journey, no doubt about it. They came to get Dark Journey, and she is motionless. And the missing link is confused. He's like a dazed animal looking around the Look lake. Look at Missy Hyatt. Not knowing what to do. Look at her. Look at the blonde. Look at the blonde. Yeah. Really proud of themselves, strutting. Ladies and gentlemen, this is sick. Appalling. Well, we just saw the footage of Missy Hyatt getting the best of me. And, of course, we're going to see some footage of me getting the best of Missy Hyatt. Well, one thing about it is you're going to get the opportunity to get very, very personal with Missy Hyatt because in the Reunion Arena, it's the biggest card in the history of Texas. Over 40 participants, 12 great matches, three championship matches, as a matter of fact. But one of those 12 matches is a battle royal that features John Tatum, Hollywood John, if you will, and Missy Hyatt at ringside. Jack Victory, they say maybe Maxine will be at ringside. Also, Jimmy Garvin, Precious will definitely be at ringside. And the missing link in that battle royal and Dark Journey will be at ringside. Now that's going to be quite an interesting situation because the winner's going to win this coat and that is something to fight for. It is. I'm going to be very happy and very excited when the missing link gets his hand raised and this coat will be mine. And I hear through the grapevine that you got one or two more tricks up your sleeve for Missy Hyatt. Yes, I've said it before, dirty deeds are done dirt cheap and I still have dirty deeds. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll be talking to Missy Hyatt in just a few moments but now let's see that footage that Dark Journey mentioned. The challengers thrown together once more. And Fulton, with those short right hands right to the face of victory. Look at Missy Hyatt. It looked like she, she stuck her hands right in the eyes of Tommy Rogers. And the referee saw it and they're calling for the bell, a disqualification. I think a disqualification has been rendered here. Missy Hyatt buried those long fingers into the eyes that looked like of Tommy Rogers. But we've got a very, a very touchy situation here. And they're bringing Missy Hyde in. Look at, they're wanting her to slap Tommy Rogers. And she slapped Rogers right in the face. How humiliating. But this crowd is deafening. And there goes Dark Journey in the missing link. They have seen all of what they want. And Dark Journey has slapped Missy Hyatt right in the face. And look at the leak in the headbutts and the Fantastics are back in the ring. Dark Journey says, you are mine. And Missy Hyatt. Hyatt's trying to get out of the ring. Tatum and Victory are pulling her away from Dark Journey. The missing link's on the floor. It's pandemonium in Tulsa. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've heard from Dark Journey, and if we can get uh, Missy Hyatt and John Tatum's attention here, we'll talk about what we've just seen. I know that you probably won't forget that in, in the near future. She did get a little bit of revenge now. I picture. cannot believe that Dark Journey, just like someone of her upbringing, to sneak up back. there and slap me in my face! Johnny! Sorry. It's behind the back, Missy. It's not well, let me behind tell the you. back, Jim Ross. Behind There's the going to be a match. It has to do with a mink coat, a full-length mink coat. Now, I have many a coat. I wouldn't care if it was a Rolls Royce dark journey because the symbol is that means you're the first lady of professional wrestling, and that's me. And I've got the man right here to win that coat for me, to get that coat for me, Hollywood. That's me. Oh, 
Ladies and gentlemen, the Dark Journey Missy Hyatt situation is far, far from over, and we'll be back with more after this. Would I lie to you? It's like feast or famine for Victor. He's around the beautiful Missy Hyatt, and then he's back in the company of the sheep herders. That's about from one end of the spectrum to the other. About yes, as far is. as you can get. Would you agree with that? Uh, that's one thing I would agree with you, Helium Head. But, you know, there's one thing I wanted to say. I also agree with the sheep herders. I don't think it's fair that they can't wrestle the uh, Fantastics because UWF decided their matches are too bloody, they're too gory to put on TV. Hey, the place to show your stuff is on television, and if people think that the Fantastics and Sheep Herders feud is over, then they're sadly mistaken. Because right. these guys have got one thing on their mind, and that's taking those belts, but they're not the only ones that's got on their mind. We wouldn't mind having them, and when we decide to take them, we will. And I also know that Jack Victory and uh, Hollywood John Tatum felt that they had them going last week, and they deserve another shot. Luke Williams. Crazy Luke now, and Brett Wayne saw reversing it on Luke. I don't know if the place that hit him is in the head. I don't know if there's anything there. That's true. Whoa, good move. Went for a turnbuckle, reversed it. Sawyer was ready, took the foot. Well, that seems to be doing something by hitting him in the head. Knee to the gut. Another knee to the gut. Snap mare. Knee right across the chest. Cover him. Hooked his leg. Smart move. Of course, that came, that came from that amateur background, tagged to Gary Young. Now, Gary Young got a victory last week. Boom, that's illegal. That's illegal. Side headlock, hip lock takeover. Thing there, though, they had crazy Luke going. You don't stop it now. There's a tag to Butch, and they've got him tied up on their side of the field. They got him down there over on their side, and in their corner, man. It's like having somebody driving at your 10-yard line. Good knee to the gut. As I've always said, if you take the wind out of the man, he can't breathe. All he can do is panic while he gets beat up. There's Jack Victory. Well, we've got this tag team situation. We have more tag team action coming your way. Does it bother you? Do you know, who, you know Cowboy Bill Watts? And a free burst, and it's not that much longer. I noticed. Well, I've been looking at my watch. I'll, I'll tell you what. I'm fixing to go get ready. I know Bam Bam's ready, and uh, I'm sure he's found somebody by now. If he was the real man and cowboy that everybody around here and all around the country and world thinks he is, he'd face up and tell us. I mean, it's not really fair that we have to go in there and not be preparing to wrestle somebody because we don't know who he's bringing. Well, you'll find out in due time. The same time we will. Just a little bit later in this hour. In the meantime. Butch Miller buries that right hand into the ribs of Gary Young and likewise from Crazy Luke. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to go talk to Terry. I'm going to get loosened up for this match. I'm sure the sheep herd has got things under control. Whether they do or not is irrelevant to me. I'm going to take care of the cowboy. Bam Bam's going to take care of him right here on national television. And what, hey, I'm just going to go get ready. I'm tired of you and I'm tired of everything. Well, that suits me just fine, ladies and gentlemen. Michael Hayes now leaving the, our vantage point here, leaving this area. Doesn't hurt my feelings any. Butch Miller viciously throwing Gary Young into those turnbuckles. Michael Hayes did bring out a couple of good points. Don't ever think that the, the situation between the Fantastics and the Sheep Herders is over. But I think it's a good judgment was used by 
Universal Wrestling Federation by not having any matches on television. At least they threw us down somewhat. And now the tag is made. Brett Sawyer in there against Crazy Luke of the Sheep Herders. And Sawyer buries the right hand into the midsection. The fine young athlete, Brett Wayne Sawyer. And the Sheep Herders thrown together. Sawyer's drop kick sent both Sheep Herders flying to the mat. Sawyer went for another drop kick, but to no avail, they've, they've just double clotheslined Gary Young. Brett Sawyer had things going his way, but now they're double teaming him. They've double teamed that young man. He had it going his way until he missed a drop kick, and the double team tactics of the Sheep Herders pays off once again. They are tough. You can look at their faces. They are extremely tough, and they're obsessed by being this great American team, the Fantastics, for the UWF Tag Team titles. And ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back with some great action featuring Coco Ware and Rick Steiner and a very special video after this timeout. with Frank Dusick back at ringside with you. We've got a lot more action coming your way, including Coco Ware versus Rick Steiner. But Frank, I want your comments on something, but let's watch it together. We're going to recap the recent events involving Cowboy Bill Watts, Dr. S.D. Williams' injury, and then you're going to hear some very special comments I think you're going to be most interested in. Listen to this. It's all three of them now on Dr. Death, Steve Williams, Terry Bam Bam Gordy, the enforcer. He's going for the... Oh no, 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 he's going for the pile driver on the floor. No, just like Atlanta, 1982. Oh. oh no, this is unbelievable. Where's some help? Someone from the back, please, if you can hear me, please send someone out for some help. Please send someone out. Steve Biasi's down. Williams out, he's not moving, he's hurt. Oh man, this is terrible, this is terrible. I just got out of therapy. And I'm icing my neck. You know, I sit here and I think about the match and I really don't know exactly what happened. All I know that Bam Bam had that oriental spike on Ted and I thought I was getting the best of him. Three on one. And then it was the lights out. Oh. Ooh. You know, I hear that UWF suspending the Freebirds. I don't want nobody to suspend nobody. I want the Freebirds to be in great health when I come back. Freebirds, I have one thing to tell you. While you're eating your breakfast, while you're running down that highway, you just remember who you hurt. You just remember. We all love our dad, and we don't want him to get hurt. But if he knows he can handle the situation, then we're behind him 100%. Dr. Death's a close personal friend of the family. He's like a brother to us. He got hurt, him and my father got hurt, in a three-on-one situation. And we all know that in a one-on-one -on -one situation, Doc or my father could handle any one of them. But when it's three-on-one, it's a different situation. But Micah, Anna, you know, Dad's got the wing clippers. He's got the equalizer. This will give him a fighting chance in the ring. And you and I both know he knows how to swing. Not too well. So, Freebirds, you better watch out. What more can you say, Frank? I think it's clear, you know, the family's accepted the fact that the Cowboy's back in, and he's back in here to stay. He means business. They've awakened the sleeping tiger. The family's behind him. That just is the green light to the Cowboy to do what he needs to do to get the job done. It's war, ladies and gentlemen, and now let's go to the ring in our next great match. From Detroit, weighing 260 pounds, Rick Steiner! Double time 
tough individual from Union City, Tennessee, and he's coming home Friday night to the Mid-South Coliseum. I can't wait to see the Birdman in action. They all love Coco Wary, except his opponents when they get that drop kick right in the face. I tell you what, when Coco B. Ware walks down that main street, Memphis, Tennessee, they hang from the rafters for him, don't they? They all know and love the Birdman. Look at him. Mr. Excitement right there. Well, they say dynamite comes in small packages. I think that young man there is certainly a testimony to that fact. There's no doubt about it. He's as explosive as any individual in the race of the sport today, Jeff Ross. Without a doubt. There's some great music in the background. We'll hear more music a little bit later in the hour. Our premiere video from the forthcoming album, Rebel Rock. The boys are back in town. Michael Hayes, the Bass Street Band, will have that later in this hour. And then who will be Cowboy Bill Watts' partner? We're going to find that out in this hour as well because the Cowboy. It's contagious. <laughs> it sure is, isn't it? Little of that blue-eyed soul there. That's it. But the free birds, I was missing Michael Hayes and Terry Gordy against Cowboy Bill Watts and a big question mark on my sheet. I cannot wait for that one, but we've got a great matchup here. We've got a young man, Rick Steiner. What a powerfully built oh. individual. As strong an upper body as any man in the sport today. And that hip toss right there, if you'll notice, Jim Ross was done with less leverage and more strength. Both people set the hip in deeper to use the leverage of the man's upper body to toss him over. He just used that massive shoulder and tricep strength and lifted him up and over. He's a young man from right outside Detroit, Michigan, went to school, University of Michigan. And the folks up in Lansing watching uh, Universal Wrestling Federation tonight, we want to welcome you aboard with us here this morning, Friday night. One of the 100 plus stations on the UWF television network, I might add. You know, I don't know how you do it, Jim Ross, putting up with Michael Hayes all the time. He cries so much about this and that. I'll bet you his tea kettle doesn't whistle. I bet you it cries. <laughs> well, they say uh, patience is a virtue, so maybe I'm developing some in my later years. <laughs> well, we'll talk about that at another time. Coco Ware, ladies and gentlemen, and Rick Steiner, two superbly conditioned athletes here on the Universal Wrestling Federation. Coco's got that, that low center of gravity. That, whoa! What a power slam! Right there is what I'm talking about, that low center of gravity. He was able to get up underneath the big man, Steiner, use his momentum, use his weight to get him up and over. And that's not a press slam, but a power slam. Experience, agility, mobility, hostility, it's all right there, Jim Ross. I don't think that Steiner exhibited or saw any activity like he just witnessed and felt in the Big Ten tournament when he was wrestling for the blue and gold of old Michigan U. And I certainly don't mean any disrespect to that tremendous institution. What a football program Bo Schimbecker has assembled there. A powerhouse year in and year out. Well, just one look at what his athlete here tells you what kind of men he, young men he produces. Look at the size and the strength and the ability of Rick Steiner. That, that's a credit to the program right there. That's what we're talking about. You're talking about a 275-pound man that just leapfrog. Oh, flying body press. Coco Ware's got the leg grapevine and a near fall. I tell you what, Frank, if folks want to see action like this in their hometown, we can bring it to them, can't we? We sure can. You know, we got a special thanks to the folks at uh, Bogalusa. Had a real successful show down there. Congratulations to them. Talking about the folks here in Oak Mogi and Warner and Porter, Oklahoma. We're coming all over the United States to all these nonprofit groups, these very same stars. All they got to do is give us the call. You know the number, Jim. I sure do. It's 918 366 And be sure that you have an adult call and call between 8, 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Monday through Friday only, please. That's correct. A little, a little bit of a cheap shot there. You know, I don't think he learned that there at the wrestling program at the University of Michigan. That's something he's picked up since he joined the pro rights. He'll find eventually that those cheap shots don't have their place. Steiner is so strong in the upper body as Frank so aptly described earlier in this match. Now look at this. That was a that was a vicious power slam. It's One, really two. I tell you, this is a great test for both these fine young athletes. Coco Ware, obviously, 
has the advantage on the experience because Steiner is just like into his maybe his second year, huh, Frank? Something like that. I think that's it. I think he just completed his first year and starting his second. He's got that awesome size, but he lacks that experience. Coco Ware has got it all, though. Now look at him. Oh, he's wound up, too, and the people are behind him, Jim. He's smoking, and I said last week he'd do some serious poking. That's what he was doing there. And Steiner, though, caught him oh. with a power slam. Coco's all the way through. What a maneuver. Oklahoma hay right out of the power slam. One, two, three, Jim Ross. You haven't seen that in years. Unbelievable. The Birdman, Coco Ware, flying home to Memphis Friday night. And we'll be back with a free bird via premiere video when we return from this timeout. Who's already signed to be here Friday, August 8th on a hit that history making card 20 man two ring battle royal for $50,000. $50, you know what that's all about. You know, not only that, Peter, but uh, there's two rings, 20 men. You got to throw one, you know, they do it every year. And I'm glad to be in it. And hopefully, I'm looking forward to the $50,000. But we have also signed a contract to wrestle three against three against the Freebirds, Terry Taylor, myself, and Bill Watts against the Freebirds. And I'm looking forward to it. And I want everybody out there to come out and support us because this is what it's all about. Wrestling, the, the fastest growing sport, the fastest growing Universal Wrestling Federation, the fastest growing Federation. Amigos, los quiero invitar para el 8 de agosto ya que va a haber una batalla campal con dos rines, con 20 hombres, 50 mil dólares de por medio. También estamos, hemos firmado una lucha de relevos australianos, Bill Watts, Terry Taylor y su servidor contra los Freebirds. Y todo lo que le pido a ustedes es su apoyo, así como me han estado apoyando, así como he llegado al estrellato con ustedes, así voy a luchar en la lucha estrella, quiero que ustedes estén aquí para apoyarme. Vamos a enseñarle de lo que estamos hechos nosotros los mexicanos, de lo que está hecho la raza bronce. Viva México, amigos, y aquí nos vemos el 8 de agosto. Peter, we'll see you here the 8th, and hopefully $50,000, Richard. Thank you. Good luck, Chavo. 50,000 where will be here Friday, August 8th. He will battle Kamala, the Ugandan giant, and also, you ventured in that 20-man touring battle royal, $50,000. That's right. You see the bird, man? He's back in Houston. He's doing his thing, baby. I want to say hello, Houston. I'm glad to be back because y'all are my fans, baby. I love the people right here in Houston. And you see, that's going to be a 2,000. I mean, two, a lot of men are, what, a battle royal, two battle royals, two rings in, in the Houston Coliseum. Let me get myself together here. That's right. Two big old rings right here in the Sam Houston Coliseum. And, brother, there's going to be $50,000 on the line. You see, some Somebody's going to go home and party hardy. I ain't lying with you. They're going to be partying hardy with you all night long. But now I got to face Kamala, the Ugandan giant. You see, he's big and he's bad. But you know one thing? When I get in that ring, I know definitely he's going to fall. Because I got to watch Skandor Akbar. I got to watch Kamala. And it only takes one mistake, Kamala, and you're going down for the one, two, and three. So I'm not going to say that. I'm going to beat you. But I'm going to tell you one thing. Don't make a big, big mistake and let me get on that ring, baby, and come on with the bird on you because if you do you moss well you're thrilled baby right here in the sam houston coliseum because i'm telling the fans in sam houston is great baby Woo! i'm fired up baby i can't wait to see you kamala because i'm gonna beat you so bad boy that your own mama won't recognize you when you go back to africa coco beware he's fired up about to talk to the world famous michael hayes and the fabulous freebirds and the freebirds have signed to be in that super summer spectacular here in the Coliseum, Friday, August 8th, in that 20-man two-ring battle royal for $50,000. But just as important, they're in that six-man tag war in two rings at the same time, and the fabulous Freebirds are known throughout the world as the best in six-man tag wars. That's because we are known as the world's six-man tag team champions. We are known for rock and roll. We are known for bad street and busting heads. And it wouldn't be a summer spectacular if the fabulous Freebirds weren't on it. Now, I told y'all on May 30th that one of us would walk out with that UFW title and the 100 grand, and we did. Bam Bam's the champion, and we done spent the 100 grand. Because you see, when you live the lifestyle that we do, spending 100 grand is no problem. Because we live every night like a Saturday night. We are front page news every day. And I'm telling you right now that even though 50,000 ain't as much as 100, we'll still take it just like we took the UFW title. But there's something else I want to talk about. Because I am the fox that rocks, you understand? I am Michael P.S. Hayes. And every woman out there knows it. Knows what P.S. stands for. Your wife knows it. 
That's right, your wife, your girlfriend, your fiance, and even your daughters know it. P.S. stands for purely sexy. But come August 8th, right here at Sam Houston, I ain't gonna be purely sexy. You understand? Because there's one man that's on my mind. Somebody that can cost my brother the television title. That maniac that runs around with that baseball bat. He thinks he's Marshall Dillon. He didn't retire from wrestling. They forced him out because he's a fat-headed idiot. So now, we're going to have a six-man tag team match. The only thing is, it's going to be in two rings. You understand that? Dos! Dos rings! And there's going to be one match going on in one side, and another match on the other side, and the third participants are going to be in the middle of the ring. So I'm going to get in the middle of the ring, and I'm going to decide who I want to beat on at which time, and nobody's going to do nothing about it, because I'm going to tell you what, Helium Head Watts, you and that taco bended Chavo Guerrero, and that little sissy Terry Taylor who's holding Buddy's belt. You are holding Buddy Jack Roberts' belt, boy, and this ain't going to go on for long, because you're fixing to have to put it up against him, and if there's anybody who's going to do anything about it, it's going to be me, because I'm sick and tired of bureaucracy. I have put up with this all of my life. I have fought up since a little kid on the streets to get where I got to today. And I ain't letting no president, no fat-headed Bill Watts, no Taco Ben and Chavo Guerrero, or no sissy like Terry Taylor ruining it. You understand that? You just be ready on the 8th. The Fabulous Freebirds battle Cowboy Bill Watts. Chavo Premier Guerrero. a new video. It's, uh, it's got a lot of very talented people involved in it. I'm talking about Ricky Medlock, Ricky Phillips, and Jimmy Papa, the drummer of the Bad Street Band. This is the, will be the first single off the new album that the Freebirds are releasing uh, forthcoming in just a few weeks. That album called Rebel Rock. But the uh, song that we're going to hear in this premiere video is The Boys Are Back in Town. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Tulsa Convention Center. There you see Cowboy Bill Watts, and it's going to be Terry Taylor. Terry Taylor will be Cowboy Bill Watts' partner against the Freebirds. Here on the Universal Wrestling Federation. And now taken by the way, this came down to Tulsa. They hit the Freebirds. And it's going to be this Saturday night. But there is the big Cowboy. Well, that Tennessee Thumper and Terry Taylor will be his partner. It's time to get down. This is from Bixby, Oklahoma, and we have the Terry Taylor and Cowboy Bill Watts. And uh, new music. We just heard it a few moments ago. The boys are back in town. Michael Hayes and Terry. Bam, Bam, Gordy, and Cowboy are saying, come on down. Michael Hayes is trying to restrain Bam Bam, who's ready to fight anytime, anywhere. But Michael, I think. There may be, there is obviously some hesitation on Michael Hayes' part because of one 300-pound cowboy with a baseball bat. Well, now he's coming up here. What do you want? Right now, this guy's a maniac. He's ridiculous. He didn't retire. They forced him out of wrestling. We ain't wrestling. This is a universal heavyweight champion. I'm Michael P.S. Hayes. We are not wrestling this idiot. As long as he's got that ball bat, you can forget it. I'm sure the referee will take that ball bat away from him, Michael. Don't no, I ain't going there. Don't worry no. about it. Hey, what's the sport of wrestling coming to, man? I don't know. You guys, are, I'll tell you, you don't have any business up here. You know that. Hey, get the ball bat. Hey, President Sidney, come on down. Bam Bam's ready for action. Hey, Bam Bam, I want to show you where Bam a lot of people here in Tulsa Lake Bass Street runs right through Bixby. That's where that man's from. I don't like this situation whatsoever. As long as he's got that bat, he can forget it. It's ain't baseball. Who do you think he is? Marshall Dillon? Come on, man. We'll take that ball out of the way from him. Well, Bam Bam wants some... I don't really like this position I'm in here too much at all.
You go take it away from him. Well, I'll tell you what. Everybody in here, the television audience, you see you've got no guts. This is not the dang gum. This is not the place for any of this stuff. This is, oh, wait a minute. Don't go away, wrestling fans, because we... Doing this one in our towns. Coco Beware! And from parts unknown, at 260 pounds, the missing week! Well, up in the ring, we have a the makings of a tag team war because on one side, we've got Hollywood, John Tatum, team with Jack Victory. Now you're looking at the team of Missing Link, Coco Beware, with Dark Journey in their corner, and the lovely Missing Hyatt in the corner of John Tatum and Jack Victory. And this showdown, Jim, could explode. It sure could, Pete. Hollywood, John Tatum through that steel folded chair Folding chair into the ring. Look at the link. His head is seemingly impervious to pain. Really a weapon. He's a blockbuster, no doubt about it. And what a rivalry has developed between Missy Hyatt, the arrogant young rich girl. And it looks like the Tatum and Victory are a little bit hesitant in getting in the ring with the missing link. Because the Link destroyed a metal chair with his head, and they're thinking, well, if he can do that to a chair, that's what can he do to me? Because the Link, and I like, you know, his style is, is awful unique, but his, uh, those guys have got a point. If he can do that to a chair, what can he do to flesh and, flesh and bone, so to speak? When the bell sounds, one fall showdown. But this is a type of event that you better keep some eyes peeled for the outside of the ring as well because in one corner you have Missy Hyatt and the other corner Dark Journey. Jim, there's been a lot of talk about these two females and the feud that is bre uh, brewing between the two of them. Well, Dark Journey got rid of Lady Maxine by herself. She didn't have anybody to help her. She did it one-on-one. -on -one. But Missy Hyatt, in her quest to be the so-called and self-proclaimed, I might add, first lady and I use that term rather loosely, of uh, professional wrestling, she's had a lot of help from the two men in the ring, those two blondes, Tatum and Hyatt. And so now look. Well, Tatum says he can, he'll take on Coco Ware. And that is no small uh, order, I'll tell you that. Coco Ware's double tough. Coco Beware starts off with a team of Coco Beware and the missing link under the guidance of Dark Journey. And you can see in the foreground at least you got a quick glimpse of Missy Hyatt as she is under control for Hollywood John Tatum and Jack Victory and Coco Beware is doing what he does best and that's sending his opponents flying throughout the ring. The Birdman 
as the Birdman. He's excited about this match, but also he's also excited about his big opportunity on August 8th when he goes up against Kamala because he may become the giant killer that night. That's the task that is set for him. Can he meet the challenge of Kamala and Missy Hyatt there in all of her splendor? She's a very attractive young lady, but not to take anything away from the equally beautiful Dark Journey. But I gotta admire Dark Journey. She, she broke away from Dick Slater you want to make it on her own in a man's world? Really. You know, it's, uh, and I'm not being chauvinistic, but professional wrestling is basically, it has been for, for decades, a, a, a man's sport. And she's trying to make her niche as a businesswoman in the man's world, and she's doing a tremendous job of it. And she takes care of things herself, one-on-one. -on -one. I admire that attitude immensely. Well, she showed a lot of her character when she was not intimidated by Lady Maxine, to say the least, and she was able to send Lady Maxine packing. Well, there you see some of the teamwork that Jack Victory and Hollywood John Tatum are capable of producing. That time, he was a little bit too slow because Coco Beware can explode in that ring. He has that tight quickness. And the missing link now, using that vicious headbutt of his, that famous headbutt, and I tell you, you see a unique team in the missing link of Coco Beware. No doubt about it. You talk about the term contrast in styles, and Tatum and Victory said, we're leaving. There's just no way that we're going to contend with that head and that headbutt. And, his, you know, the Lynx head is like a battering ram. He has no regard, quite obviously, for his own well-being. And Missy Hyatt is encouraging her guys to get back in the ring. Look at Tatum. He's on Dream Street. And one thing about Missy, she doesn't have to contend with those headbutts. So it's easy for her to say, get back in there and fight. And look at Dark Journey. Dark Journey wants to make sure that Missy Hyatt is not going to be able to give an advantage to her tag team in there. And so Dark Journey is showing her support behind her team of the Missing Link and Coco Beware. But Missy Hyatt now arguing with Tommy Gilbert. She gives the, the term airhead a new meaning. Now, Missy Hyatt down on the floor. Tommy Gilbert has got a tough job ahead of him. You know, he, go ahead, Pete, I'm because sorry. he not only has a tag team to contend with, but he knows the explosive capa capability of Dark Journey and Missy Hyatt. Well, I'll tell you, with the attire that Missy is wearing tonight and the way that Dark Journey looks in her attire, there's no wonder that uh, the ringside seats go quick. And they'll go quick for August the 8th and the missing link. He may have just bit off a finger, maybe the missing finger of Hollywood John Tatum. As they're feeling some frustration, how do you wrestle someone like the missing link? Well, that's a great question. I'm sure if anybody has the answer that Missy Hyatt and John Tatum and Jack Victory would be more than happy to listen to them. Because they obviously have yet to find out the correct combination in solving that key, there she is. Very attractive, Dark Journey. Communicating with the missing link. And it's an interesting situation. The, now, you know, I, it would be uh, a play on words to say that she has a very unusual power over men. I guess that would be quite obvious to the, to the eye. But she has a very unique rapport with the missing link. They communicate. And I think that's rather unique in itself. Now, Coco Ware. All four men in the ring in the same time momentarily. A little shifting of the troops, if you will, is that each one trying to display their strategy and try to work their particular team into an advantage. But Hollywood John Tatum and Jack Victory, they're a good team together. You may not agree with their style, but they do team well together. And with Missy Hyatt outside the ring, they're going to be a tag team to be reckoned with. That's not how you wrestle the missing link. Ooh. And that head of the missing link as he possesses one of the hardest heads in professional wrestling. And he uses every opportunity to incorporate it into his wrestling attack. And as he's got Jack Victory inching towards Coco Beware, the missing link there showing a little ring savvy. Sure did. As he was able to turn Victory around and make sure it was Victory 
who caught the sneak attack of Hollywood John Tatum. The California Blondes, Tatum and Hyatt, or Tatum and Victory, well, Missy Hyatt too, but Tatum and Victory more specifically have certainly not fared too well as of yet in this contest. And still we're sitting like in a powder keg, on, on top of a powder keg, with Hyatt and DJ at ringside. Oh, look at this. That's pretty sickening. You know, it's a strange uh, team here, Victory and Tatum. They're, going, I, they're nonetheless very effective, and I think they're going to get better and better. Their boyhood friends... And good to have you with us, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you enjoyed the, the action. I don't know a better term to use. He's a strong guy, but he's just a little bit awkward. I mean, he's young, and he's, you know, he's, 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 he's gaining experience daily, but... Uh, Gary, I think Gary's got the advantage in that regard. He's a better athlete, I think, at this point in time in his career. Better experience. He's controlled this match. It's, it's been a match that I, I, that I, you know, we we haven't yelled and screamed, Pete, but it's a match that Gary Young has really controlled from the outset here. So, uh, good plan of strategy unfolding before us by Gary Young. As you see referee Tommy Gilbert watching very close. I think talking just a little bit more about Hacksaw Jim Duggan and One Man Gang on Friday, August 8th. Remember, both rings will be set up. Maybe two rings will be big enough to hold those two big men. I just don't know. Yeah, that's, that would be a good point of discussion for a lot of wrestling fans. Uh, I think very easily when you have no disqualifications, no rules, folks, that one could just as easily be in the seat next to you as it could be in the middle of the ring. Hacksaw Duggan, the one-man gang, August the 8th, no disqualifications. And I'll tell you something else. Uh, Hot Step, Eddie Gilbert, and Sting joining forces to challenge the tag team champions, Bobby Fulton, Tommy Rogers, the Fantastics. I got to think that Eddie Gilbert's got a plan. He's a real, uh, well, a devious thinker, but he's a, he, he is a thinker nonetheless. I've got to think he's got a very sound game plan and maybe something up his sleeves for the Fantastics for the tag team titles on August the 8th. A driving kick that time to the midsection of Gary Young as the Libyan now trying to unleash his attack. But Gary Young has been able to come back every time and try to prevent the Libyan from gaining any kind of momentum whatsoever. But the Libyan that time, you can just see how he just outmuscled Young into the corner. He sure did, Pete. That's a very good point. He's a big, strong young man. And now Gary Young's had just about all the Libyan he wants. That's a clubbing right hand. And the crowd roars its approval here in the Coliseum. That time Gary Young did a beautiful job in sending him up high in the air. As Young's starting to open up, and uh, Good drop kick by a big man. We've got Young on top. we got two, but no three. You know, Gary's about 6'3", I would guess, somewhere in that neighborhood. His big range of young man, but a perfectly executed drop kick. But now the Libyan back to the brawling tactics. Knee drop, a lot of high impact maneuvers. He's not a wrestler, I think, at this point. His Gary's a brawler. There's that clothesline. Now, Houston Cougars of the Rice Owls are the gunslingers. That's 15 yards. We got two, but Gary Young kicks out on that third count. As we've seen very young through the years, we know that this youngster can take a lot of punishment. As mentioned before, he stays in top condition, and that is extremely important in this particular sport because you want to be able to be in condition to give out punishment, but you've got to be in top condition to absorb the punishment during the match and still have what it takes to come back to win it. Another match that we want to focus on, we're talking about this whole card, ladies and gentlemen, on uh, August the 8th. Missing Link and his partner on that evening. I wouldn't have believed it a year ago or two years ago, more specifically. Ted DiBiase and the Missing Link against John Tatum and Jack Victory. And the Texas Tornado Tag Match. Remember, and the girls are, the girls are going to be there. Great, great maneuver by Gary Young, that flying elbow. That might be all for the Libyan. Oh, a two count, near fall there. The Libyan strength really pulling through on that one. But I got a feeling that Missy Hyde and Dark Journey, while the guys are in one ring, they darn sure might be in the other one 
settling their differences once and for all, all by themselves in that one ring. And remember, there'll be no referee in that ring either. That referee will be in there with a the man. I think it's also important to point out that all these matches we're talking about take place all on that same night. Oh, it's Friday, August card. 8th. Libyan working over Gary Young. Got seven big matches, Pete, plus that 20-man two-ring battle royal. It shapes up to be one of the hottest cards of the summer, and I encourage the folks out there listening to 39 Gold, get your tickets early. Go by 1919 Carolina through the week. Get your tickets early. Get the best seat possible. I'm anxious to see who's going to come away with $50,000. Up in the ring, we saw Gary Young come across that forearm and send the Libyan back, but only a couple steps because he keeps charging at him like a tank. You can stop him for a little bit, but that Libyan just keeps coming at you. And that's what Gary Young's trying to contend with right now. He's been able to give a lot of punishment to Libyan, but you can see that he's coming and keeps coming at Young. Setting him up, and uh, Libyan was coming up and over the top rope. That's not a disqualification since his own momentum carried him over the top rope. And Young now sees an opportunity, and he's going to try to seize the moment, but Libyan switched it. And a crossbody block. Gary Young on top. We've got two. And a beautiful move by Gary Young. He stayed with the wrestling tactics. And that's what paid off in victory. So Gary Young, the winner of this match. We'll be back with more Houston wrestling action in just one moment. Coco Beware and the Missing Link under the guidance of Dark Journey. And you can see in the foreground, at least you got a quick glimpse of Missy Hyatt as she is under control for Iowa John Tatum and Jack Victory. And Coco Beware is doing what he does best, and that's sending his opponents flying throughout the ring. The Birdman, as the Birdman, he's excited about this match, but also he's also excited about his big opportunity on August 8th when he goes up against Kamala because he may become the giant killer that night. That's the task that is set for him. Can he meet the challenge of Kamala and Missy Hyatt there in all of her splendor? She's a very attractive young lady, but not to take anything away from the equally beautiful Dark Journey. But I gotta admire Dark Journey. She, she broke away from Dick Slater. She wanted to make it on her own in the man's world, really. You know, it's, uh, and I'm not being chauvinistic, but professional wrestling is basically, and has been for, for decades, a, a, a man's sport. And she's trying to make her niche as a businesswoman in the man's world, and she's doing a tremendous job of it. And she takes care of things herself, one-on-one. -on -one. I admire that attitude immensely. Well, she showed a lot of her character when she was not intimidated by Lady Maxine, to say the least, and she was able to send Lady Maxine packing. Well, there you see some of the teamwork that Jack Victory and Hollywood John Tatum are capable of producing that time. He was a little bit too slow because Coco Beware can explode in that ring. He has that tight quickness. Now, missing Link now using that vicious headbutt of his, that famous headbutt. And I tell you, you see a unique team in the Missing Link of Coco Beware. No doubt about it. You talk about the term contrast in styles and Tatum and Victory said, we're leaving. There's just no way that we're going to contend with that head and that headbutt, and his, you know, the Lynx head is like a battering ram. He has no regard, quite obviously, for his own well-being, and Missy Hyatt is encouraging her guys to get back in the ring. Look at Tatum. He's on Dream Street. And one thing about Missy, she doesn't have to contend with those headbutts, so it's easy for her to say, get back in there and fight, and look at Dark Journey. Dark Journey wants to make sure that Missy Hyatt is not going to be able to give an advantage to her tag team in there. And so Dark Journey is showing her support behind her team of the Missing Link and Coco Beware. But Missy Hyatt now arguing with Tommy Gilbert. She gives the, the term airhead a new meaning. And now Missy Hyatt down on the floor. Tommy Gilbert has got a tough job ahead of him. You know, he, go ahead, Pete, I'm sorry. he not only has a tag team to contend with, but he knows the explosive capability of Dark Journey and Missy Hyatt. 
Well, I tell you, with the attire that Missy is wearing tonight and the way that Dark Journey looks in her attire, it's no wonder that uh, the ringside seats go quick. And they'll go quick for August the 8th and the missing link. He may have just bit off a finger, maybe the missing finger of Hollywood John Tatum. As they're feeling some frustration, how do you wrestle someone like the missing link? Well, that's a great question. I'm sure if, if anybody has the answer that Missy Hyde and John Tatum and Jack Victor would be more than happy to listen to them. Because they obviously have yet to find out the correct combination in solving the key. There she is, very attractive dark journey, communicating with the missing link. And it's an interesting situation. The, now, you know, I, it would be a, a play on words that said that she has a very unusual power over men. I guess that would be quite obvious to the, to the eye. But she has a very unique rapport with the missing link. They communicate. And I think that's rather unique in itself. Now Coco Ware, all four men in the ring in the same time momentarily. A little shifting of the troops, if you will, is that each one trying to display their strategy and try to work their particular team into an advantage. But Hollywood John Tatum and Jack Victory, they're a good team together. You may not agree with their style, but they do team well together. And with Missy Hyatt outside the ring, they're going to be a tag team to be reckoned with. That's not how you wrestle the missing link. Ooh. And that head of the missing link, as he possesses one of the hardest heads in professional wrestling, and he uses every opportunity to incorporate it into his wrestling attack. And as he's got Jack Victory inching towards Coco Beware, the missing link there has shown a little ring savvy. Sure did. As he was able to turn Victory around and make sure it was Victory who caught the sneak attack of Hollywood John Tatum. The California Blondes, Tatum and Hyatt, or Tatum and Victory, well, Missy Hyatt too, but Tatum and Victory more specifically have certainly not fared too well as of yet in this contest. And still we're sitting like in a powder keg, on, on top of a powder keg, with Hyatt and DJ at ringside. Oh, look at this. That's pretty sickening. You know, that's a strange uh, team here, Victory and Tatum. They're, going, I, they're nonetheless very effective, and I think they're going to get better and better. They're boyhood friends. Don't you know they were arrogant dragging Maine when they were in high school? For wrestling fans who are watching this match and enjoy tag team action on Friday, August 8th, right here in the Coliseum, they're going to see the ultimate tag team action with that six-man, two-ring tag with the Fabish Freebirds against Chavo Guerrero, Bill Watts, and Terry Taylor. We'll talk more about that card later on. As you just saw, Jack Victory sending Coco Beware outside the ring. Now, Hollywood John Tatum getting his confidence level up. He's bad now, isn't he? Nobody in the ring. Now Coco's coming in. They'll take a sh Coco's hurt from that blow to the concrete floor. So they're taking over, taking some liberties with the Birdman. And that elbow found its mark, catching Coco right off the ropes. As Hollywood John Tatum coming to the Universal Wrestling Federation on a phone call from Jack Victory to team up into what could be a formidable force in UWF action next few months. Coco Beware coming back across body block and he almost was able to outmaneuver John Tatum. There was a tag and they helped Coco's leg or Tatum helped Coco's leg until Victor could get in there. Referee had, the only weapon the referee has is that count and what they can do between the time he starts his count until he reaches disqualification oftentimes can really be disastrous. Well, the advantage that John Tatum and Jack Victory have because of their past experience in tag teaming together, Missing Link and Coco Beware may try to offset and just sheer ability. Missy High, those high spiked heels there. Outside the ring with AC Dark Journey as she's keeping an eye on Missy Hyatt. I think there's a lot of people in this building that are keeping an eye on Missy Hyatt and Dark Journey as well. Yeah, I agree with you. Not only for the obvious, but because they know. Now she has no. Now there's where I agree. 
a lot of the fans, get her out of the ring. She has no business in there. Get out of the ring and sit down. Well, they... Dark Journey coming around there to check on her man. And Coco Ware, I'll tell you, the Birdman has had a, has had a feather to pull in this situation. Good shot of just how Coco Beware was introduced to that metal chair at ringside. As our ringside announcer and timekeeper quickly scurried for safety, but that's Dark Journey, who is now encouraging Coco Beware. Br bright red attire, quite obviously, and I've never seen red quite look so red, let's say. Dark Journey now, going back to our corner, and they're... Uh, one thing you got to give Tatum and uh, and uh, Victory, they have they have found a spot that they can work over Coco Ware. The, the blow of the concrete started Birdman's downfall in this one. But Coco Ware's a fighter and he comes right back. But look how quick Victory makes the tag and is holding the leg so Coco can't make the tag to the missing link. That's good teamwork. It's, it's not ethical, but it's good teamwork in this respect. John Tatum and Jack Victory have teamed together, and they've done very well together, especially with Missy Hyatt in their corner. But Dark Journey is trying to engineer the team of the missing link, Coco Beware, to victory tonight. Coco Beware trying to get into the corner where the missing link is reaching out as he anxiously awaits to get inside the squared circle. As missing link was distracted by Missy Hyatt, and that cost him an opportunity to tag Coco Beware. I can understand that. She's distracted me a time or two myself, and I'll tell you, that was a tactical error on the Lynx part. If he'd have stayed in the corner, he could have made the tag, but it's hard to stay there when, yeah, the Birdman blocking that suplex. It's beautiful the way he was able to hook that leg, not just once, but twice, and well, that is a plain great wrestling because he was able to counter both moves by Hollywood John Tatum and quickly come up with one of his own. Now it's Tommy Gilbert administers the count. The fans are screaming for Coco Beware to make it his way to the missing link. Slowly but surely, as Coco Beware reaches out and in comes the missing link. And that's still trouble for Jack Victory and John Tatum. Because when the missing link gets inside the ring, he knows how to take care of business. And we've got all four men and the missing link picking up Tatum, crashing to the mat. And now it's the link up to the second rope, and that's Missy Iander grabbed the leg of the missing link. The referee caught her down at ringside. And now as Missy Hyatt interfered on the match, referee Tommy Gilbert. Dark Journey's on the chase. Dark Journey's after her. Uh-oh. And she caught her. Listen to that crowd. They're roaring. And as Dark Journey tears into the Missy Hyatt, she had warned Missy Hyatt that she interfered, that she would take care of her. And that's what's taking place Oh, right there's now. hair and jewelry, clothing. It's all being ripped off. And the blondes have got Missy Hyatt, and they're getting her out. She better get the safe ground. Dark journey, boy, there was the, the fur was flying, to say the least. And Dark Journey had warned Missy Hyatt that if she stepped, stuck her nose in a match, that she would take care of it. And then it exploded after that. Some of these days, Pete, some of these days. Missy Hyatt's not going to have those guys to help her. Missy Hyatt's not going to have John Tatum and Jack Victory there to pull Dark Journey off of her. Some of these days, Dark Journey's going to find Missy Hyatt all alone, and there's going to be one little blonde that's going to be awfully sorry that that happened. We'll be back. Well, Kemp Young's still a hint You know, I tell you, it's all right. Houston. One of the favorite towns for the Fantastics to wrestle. It's all going to be happening, brother. You know what? Also on this particular card, we're going to be in a two-man, two-ring battle royal. $50,000 to the winner. You know, Tommy, I'll tell you right now. It means a lot to a man when he gets in that ring, especially when there's so many guys battling against each other, and me and you are a team, the Fantastics, right, when we right. get in that school. Well, the UWF has got some of the finest professional wrestlers in wrestling today, Bobby. So you know when you get in them two-ring battle royals that you're going against some of the best in the country. 
So when you get in there, and if you do walk out, you're going to be $50,000 richer plus you're going to have that prestige of beating all those guys. So we're looking forward to coming down to the Houston Two Ring Battle Royal. We're looking forward to coming and wrestling down there in Houston because just like Bobby said, it's the favorite place for the Fantastics to get together with all those people and get down in the middle of that square circle. And that's exactly what we're going to do is get down in the middle of that square and circle. And let me say this right now. It's a dangerous type of match, and we've been through all of them. You know, folks, professional wrestling is the toughest sport. Toughest sport than football where you don't wear all these pads and injuries happen. Sometimes you get hurt. You get a sprain, you get a bump, and you get a bruise. And when you go to go against the man, against the man like one man gang, you want to make sure you're 100%. So when I had that big old thing around my neck and the doctor said, Hacksaw, don't get in the ring. I said, well, I'll wait, doc. I'll wait till I'm 100%. And then step out of my way, doctor. Because Hacksaw Jim Duggan is going to go take care of business. Well, now it's time to start taking care of business. Old one man gang comes out there in Houston, Texas, has his arm raised. Says he's a tough man. Say he's a champion. Say he's the man that everybody has to reckon with. Well, let me tell you something, one man gang. Just ask Skandar Akbar, that little Arabian rat you got running around next to you. Or ask any one of those thousands of fans in Houston, Texas. You don't got some young punk down at the 7 Eleven you're pushing around. You've got Hacksaw Jim Duggan, tough guy. Six foot three, 275 pounds. And this is my home. This is where I live. And Houston, Texas is where I make my mark. I put my back up against a tree, and I make a big high mark myself, tough guy. It was Houston, Texas, where you, you one-man gang, you cost me that UWF title. You're the one that ran my head into that bolt. 20 stitches, a crease skull, almost the end of professional wrestling. But also it's in Houston, Texas, that you are going to go down, tough guy. First of all, I'd like to take this moment to sincerely thank each and every one of you out there for the tremendous support and the backing you've given me. Because sometimes in life, if you don't have that support, it almost seems like you're against insurmountable odds. And I know the reason that each and every one of you can do it is because you also have had your back up against the wall sometime in life when the man was trying to put you down. And we got a situation, PT, that's awesome. Michael Hayes, Akai, Charles Manson, and his Freebird family. And Charles Manson's in the penitentiary, and in my opinion, that's where he ought to stay. Michael Hayes, I want more than that for you, if you know what I mean. Now, we got the most unusual tag match I've ever been in. Trust Paul Bosch and Houston Wrestling to do it. Two rings, side by side. There's going to be six of us involved, you and I and Chavo Guerrero and the Freebird. One person out of each team will be stationed in between the two rings that can tag in either way. Now that means that nobody's going to get any rest. It's going to be a match of endurance, tactics, strategy. And it's going to be a match where intestinal fortitude is going to mean a hell of a lot. Now you know what the Freebirds, what they've done to Doc, what they've done to Diviasi, what they've done to Dougie. You know what they've tried to do to me. So Terry, to get rid of this, I want you to, when you go to that little telephone booth, would you say Shazam and you turn from the mild mannered Terry Taylor into a raging animal, our television champion? I want you to throw away the Brooks Brothers, the OP, and the Beverly Hills. I want you to get your battle gear on, baby. Looking forward to it in Houston because one thing in Houston, those people like is a fight. And those favorites think it's going to be like it's always three on one. They always jump in from behind. Well, this time we're all going to be, it's not going to be just one match. It's going to be one in one ring and one in the other. So Freebirds, you better gear it up. If you see the fire in his eye, I'm ready. Chavo Guerrero's never been Chavo right Guerrero's a key thing. Let me tell you, that's a toughest little Mexican I know. Yes, Not afraid of anything. He's got more moves than a snake. I want him on my side. And I told him, as far as I'm concerned, the Freebirds are like the Border Patrol. Get down and get ready. Bring it all together. <laughs> Terry Bam Bam Gordy, the enforcer. He's going for the... Oh, no. No, no, no. He's going for the pile driver on the floor. No. Just like Atlanta, 1982. Oh. oh, no, this is unbelievable. I don't want nobody to spend nobody. I want the Freebirds to be in great health when I come back. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another exciting hour of the Universal Wrestling Federation. We have a tremendous hour in store for you, but before we talk about this hour, let's address what Dr. Des just said. One thing that sticks in my mind is that I will be back. I will be back. You know, a lot of people make promises that they can't keep. 
and that's one that he's making right now. The only place he's going to be back to is from one hospital to another next specialist, back to the hospital, and back to recuperation, back to traction. That's the only place you're coming back. You're not coming back in the ring, boy, because you tried to walk down Bad Street. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to address this Dr. Death situation later in the hour. I do want to welcome all the great fans in Chicago and Philadelphia, Miami, Florida, Salisbury, Maryland, all new uh, affiliates on the Mid-South Sports Network. Also, we want to welcome the wrestling fans that will be in Houston, Texas on August 6th through the 9th. You know, this thing's really messing up my hair. You're going to have um, to get me a different head piece. Uh, well, I'm, I'm sincerely sorry about your hair. The yeah, WAFIA convention in Houston, Texas on August 6th through the 9th. I want to also thank all the great fans of West Texas for a very successful West Texas tour coming soon to Wichita, Kansas, Kansas City, also in Amarillo and in Abilene. You know something, Jim Ross, there was so much, of course, response over my new video, me and my brothers and our new song. And so many people, they always want bad street merchandise. They always want to buy our dolls, and they always want, of course, the records. And I heard through the grapevine that you wanted a Bad Street T-shirt. You heard I wanted one? Yeah, I heard you wanted one. So i tell you what I did here, out of the kindness of my heart, the nice guy I am, me and my brothers decided that we would bring you a shirt. I'd like everybody to see it, to see that I am a nice guy, and even though it's upside down, it doesn't really matter because half of you back there can't read anyway. And Jim Ross, this is from us to you. Well, it's a nice shirt, but it's a little small, isn't it? I mean, I don't think I can wear this. It's for your head. What do you mean it's for my head? It's for your head. You know why? Because you think small. Because you think like that cowboy thinks. You think like Ted DiBiase. You think like Dr. Death. People that make promises that they can't keep. Dr. Death is not coming back. And neither is DiBiase. He ran like the little scared rat he is. You don't see him around anywhere. You know why? Because he knew what happened to Dr. Death was intended for him. DiBiase, that's the smartest move you ever did, brother. You just keep running. You understand? You just keep running and stay out of our way, and you might still have a wrestling career. Unfortunately, the doctor still needs a doctor. Well, ladies and gentlemen, those comments from Michael Hayes, and now let's go to the Michael ring. Michael P.S. Hayes. We have a great match in store. Let's go to the ring. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing first from Libya at 275 pounds, the Libyans. Wrestling Federation. As I mentioned, we're coming to you from the Tulsa Fairgrounds Pavilion, the site of many of the team rodeos, a lot of the big rodeos in the area, a lot of concerts. This place is packed tonight for the UWF television taping spectacular, and we're glad that you're with us at home. And we have a great hour in store for you coming up, featured with Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert. We'll also see the Fantastics in action, and then we're going to have a six man elimination tag in this hour. Cowboy Bill Watts. Press, he ducked under the elbow, almost had a two count, but the Libyan big pounds and man kicked out. There he went for the leaf edge press, didn't quite get it, I doubt he'll get the pin. That upper body strength always comes in. You know, looking at Coco Ware reminds me of the third bra that's giving me trouble, and that's that Janet Jackson with her new song, uh, Nasty Boys. She said she don't like nasty boys unless they like her nasty groove, and her first name ain't Baby, it's Miss Jackson. Let me tell her something. I will call her or any other broad, any name I choose or any name my brothers decide to choose. And if she don't like it, that's tough. And if her brothers don't like it, Michael, Tito, Jackie, and the rest of the Jacksons, I or my brothers will just slap that makeup right off her face. So let's get that straight. That's three of the broads out of the way, okay, what I had to say. 
Well, you talked about, how about you talk about five, four or five ladies where you were having problems with? You know, I'll tell you what, the other two I'm going to take care of personally. All right. I mentioned later in the hour, ladies and gentlemen, six-man elimination tag. The Missed the clothesline. You know, he went for it again. Now, see, the Libyan was smart. He went for the fast press. He got the bear hug, but Coco slapped his hands right on them ears. Well, you want to talk about wrestling cowboy Bill Watts, Hacksaw Duggan, and Terry Taylor later in the hour in a six-man elimination tag? Of course, man. You, you know, no other athlete in the world would come out here and give his great commentary and expertise and have a main event match like that and would sell out this place and any other place in the world except Michael P.S. Hayes. And I just want to say this. I want to make sure everybody understands that you can lose by submission, you can lose by pinfall, and it is also legal to throw the guy over the top rope. If you get thrown over the top, you're eliminated. And believe me, I know they got a lot of plans, especially that helium head cowboy. That well, should have been a three count. It was a good move by the Libby and a side headlock by Coco Ware. And he grabbed him around the waist and used his uh, strength to pull him over in a pinning position. Anyway, I know that they want to team up on me. And they're not going to get you because the Bad Street Birds, the boys are back in town. And we got a plan for them. You just watch. Sounds to me like you're a little paranoid. Paranoid? I ain't paranoid. Why, 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 why do you say that? Well, we'll find out later in the hour. Ladies and uh, gentlemen, we we will. Coco Ware with a side headlock on the Libyan. The Libyan, a big man. Coco Ware has wrestled a lot of big men in his time, and that thunderous, and I mean thunderous, drop kick that he executes is one of the most devastating coup de grace type maneuvers in wrestling. Well, his size, is, as far as his height, has never been a handicap to him. Just take, for instance, Spud Webb winning the dunking contest in the NBA, a man 5'7". And see that leaping ability, that's it. And he's got strength. you got to give it to him. To pick up a man like that, 275, good splash. This could be it. Nope. See that upper body strength that comes in, and he didn't hook the leg quite good enough. See, these guys are listening to me. I guess I'm going to have to write a book and make some more money off something else. Well, again, Coco Ware with a side headlock. Don't forget now, the one-man gang also will be seen in this hour. We will also have a, a feature that I've I'm quite interested done with Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert. It was very interesting. I've heard a couple things through the dressing room. and uh, he, and, I, he I, and I had a basic disagreement, and he clarified it. And it was uh, another rumor, an unfounded rumor perhaps. But uh, Well, the rumor going around the dressing room is how much is there left to Hot Stuff International. That was I mean, the Russian's gone. Rock the Blade Runner's gone. I mean, the guy's obviously in a slump. But this happens in any sport, and if Eddie Gilbert's any kind of man, he'll come out of it. Whoa! Turnbuckle, smart move by the Libyan. You see him getting better wrestling tactics every week, and using his brain more and not just brute strength. Coco went flying into there, and he moved out. Now he's hammering right on the back of that neck. Stay on that back. If I was him, I'd go a little bit lower, because Coco's got a lot of upper body strength. But what he's doing seems to be working. It certainly is. The Libyan taking over on Coco Ware, and Coco's legs are wobbly. Of course they're wobbly. That's a 275-pound man with a full-body slam. See the way he hit that mat. What you going for here? An elbow. Oh, he missed. The bird See, that's man. It. He waited too long. The bird man flew the coop on that one. And now, look, he is coming alive. A fist. Aware. Illegal fist. Everything the Libyan used was legal. Forearms. Good drop kick. It's good. Nope. See? Didn't have that leg hooked. See, he probably can't read. Otherwise, it ain't no sense to me writing a book for Coco Ware. There's another illegal right hand to the jaw. Goes for a turnbuckle, reversed it by the Libyan. Whoa! I think that was the point of the boot to the chin, which is also illegal. I guess I'm after referees here. I don't know, man. You writing a book on refereeing is somewhat ludicrous. Now, the Libyan's got him back in the corner. See, those are legal forearms. Legal forearms, not a fist. Now, the reversal, the Libyan's in the corner. High back drop. Good drop kick, not usually as high as Coco gets, but he's getting up there now. Turn in, whoa. Lights out, baby. That's it. You don't need to hook the leg on that one. The Birdman, Coco Ware, with a victory in the Wrestle Wrestling Federation. And we'll be back with a six foot nine, 454 pound one-man gang when we return from this. General Skandor Akbar from Devastation Incorporated at 454 pounds from Halston Street, Chicago, a one-man game. His opponent from Houston, Texas, at 245 pounds, Gary Young. This match, one fall or 10-minute time limit. This will be a real test.
this for Gary Young. We've seen just a couple weeks ago where he came up with that upset victory over the Libyan. It's like I said, a lot of these guys come out, they get beat every week, but if you hang in there, you, you just bound to climb that ladder if you've got it. But this might be too big a ladder for him to climb, the one-man gang. A couple weeks ago, we seen him and Hacksaw Duggan as they were going off the air, and anybody that didn't catch that match live, baby, you missed it. I'll tell you what, that, that view between Duggan and the gang is so far from over, it's not even funny. It's one of the most physical and most intense one-on-one -on -one confrontations in the history of this sport, no doubt about it. Wherever it's signed, wherever the, whatever arena gets to see, gets to have that match, it's one that you just don't want to miss. Yeah, and you know, I'd like to bring up a point to all these wrestlers that keep bugging me and, you know, telling me I want a shot at the Universal Heavyweight Champion. I want a shot at the biggest belt there is. Hey, listen, I'm not the matchmaker. You go to the matchmaker, if they think you're warranted enough or good enough or your record speaks for itself, that you can go against Terry Bam Bam Gordy, then so be it. He's got an open contract. Don't bug me about it. Well, speaking of being bugged, I got something that's bugging me right now. As a matter of, I get a lot of mail. People are blaming me for having you here. And I'd like you to clarify hey, that. Hey, baby, it's in my contract. That million dollar contract that I am allowed so much airtime whenever I want it. And look at this. Gary Young, just what I'm talking about, fighting back. And he's on an upswing drive, and he's got the gang driven back in the corner. Some smashes to the chest. Now he's driving the shoulder. He's taking the wind out of the big man. Forearm. Boy, look at that. That's a Halstead Street right hand. The gang wasn't even... He, Young was giving everything he had, but the gang didn't even go off his feet. Kind of like when the Patriots played the Bears for the Super Bowl last year. And look at that guy. He's got him fired up, man. He's got him on the cloud nine. Man, it's bigger than Refrigerator Perry by 100 pounds. That's right. He ain't no refrigerator. This guy's a big ton freezer, Daddy. And thinking of freezer, you make sure you get that word across to Janet Jackson, okay? I'll call any broad whatever I want to, and that goes for her, Madonna, all those you talked about three of those ladies, and I use the term ladies as it should, I think, but in any event, who are you? A couple of others you were mentioning. Well, I told you I'll take care of that person. I'll give you a hint on one of them, though. One of them keeps writing me letters, she keeps calling my house, and she can't admit that she's got a crush on me. Michael, are you still trying to convince everybody that Dark Journey's been calling? I don't have to convince everybody. If, why, did, why would I lie? Well, no, there's no reason to. Whoa! Gang had him going, went for the big splash in the corner. Now Young, back to the gut, back to the gut. Good forearms, got him reeling. When he hit that corner, that took some wind out of him. It's a smart move to stay on his gut area and keep going for that wind. Flying body press, no! The gang caught him in midair. Young's about 250. Whoa! Big 747, Daddy. What a power slam. He's six feet nine, well over 400 pounds. He's not finished with him yet either. I think he's going to go for the big 747. Here he goes. This is it, Gary Young. This is your night, baby. Welcome to wrestling. Look at that, just pressing it down. Perhaps the biggest challenge ever facing Hacksaw Jim Duggan, the big man, the one-man gang, and ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back with a special report on Hot Stuff International when we return from this timeout. Pavilion. What's she doing out here? She's not scheduled here. I thought we were going to see the thing on Hot Stuff. We're going to see the thing on Hot Stuff. I don't know what dark journeys in the ring, ladies and gentlemen, as you just saw, but be that as it may, I think, as, I mean, I, 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 want, I want to see the thing on Hot Stuff, Eddie Gilbert, but I am a little bit uh, interested in... Look, broads just don't come in and take over a wrestling show. Man, get her out of there. I just came out to straighten something up. We have a problem here. Michael Hayes, you keep saying I write you letters, I call you. I haven't wrote you any letters, and I haven't called you. This should be taken care of right now. Hey, hey, there you go, Michael. Hey, look, look. You know what? You stick with me. I'm going to show you just exactly how to handle women. Oh, yeah? P.S. style. All right. All right. Well, be careful here now on this, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Michael is leaving us, which doesn't hurt my feelings any. Climbing down from the scaffolding here, and we'll keep it right here. Dark Journey is in the ring, quite obviously. Very splendidly attired, I might add. There goes Michael in his red pants. Where I come from, guys don't wear red pants, but that's, I guess, not important right now. Michael's going to the ring. He's going to show us all how he handles women, and let's just sit back and listen.
Yeah, we're going to straighten something out real quick, baby. Now I want you in front of all these people, in front of all the world that's watching on television, to look me right in the eye and tell me that you didn't write me no letters and that you ain't been calling my house. Now how'd you like that walk down Bad Street, baby? Well, Dark Journey, I don't think she liked that trip down Bad Street at all. That's uh, the second time she has slapped Michael Hayes right square in the face. And something a lot of people have been, I'm sure at home, a lot of ladies are wanting to do, and I'm not talking about kissing P.S. I'm talking about slapping him right in the face. The fans in Tulsa love it. Michael Hayes has been humiliated by Dark Journey and will be back with that special report on Hot Stuff after this timeout. with you in the Universal Wrestling Federation here with Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert. The rumor is running rampant in professional wrestling that Hot Stuff International is over. And to dispel that rumor or confirm it, I thought we'd come to the source. Here's Eddie Gilbert. I want to dispel that rumor, Jim Ross. There's no such rumor. It's not the truth. Hot Stuff International is bigger and better and greater than ever. And then because of two things. One being the talent. The talent I have now is men like Rick Steiner, look at him there, just warming up with 405 pounds. The man standing over and spotting him, Sting. Everybody knows he's the most dangerous man in professional wrestling. And then last but not least, me, myself, Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert. And I am coming back out of retirement, Jim Ross. Well, no, you, haven't, you haven't competed in a quite some time, but next week you've got a big match signed with Sting to go against the Fantastics for the gold. Well, that's just what I want so I can prove to you and everybody else I'm not washed up. All right. That will at that point be proven next week. Right. Second reason that Hot Stuff is bigger than better than ever. The big one. This is the biggest. They better turn up the televisions and hear this good. There's been a merger. There's been an acquisition here. We have gotten together. And the lady I am speaking of is the gorgeous young lady, Missy Hyatt. Now, we all know she's got a lot of money. And when I hear people's got a lot of money and they won't do so on that money, I'm always there. So me and Miss Missy Hyatt, we had a little talk. We have merged together. I'm using her money now. And we're going to rule the world. So now, Jim, though, I'm going to go over and take my sugar. All right, that's fine. And I, I appreciate the time, but I, I did want to, I did want to ask one, one final question. We just have a moment here. Yeah. Are, is this relationship that you formed with Missy Hyatt strictly business? Uh, yeah, you know it's strictly business, Jim. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, there you hear from Hot Step Eddie Gilbert. You know, uh, I don't know whether it's the truth or not. We're going to attempt to talk with Missy Hyatt. We'll have that report. Ladies and gentlemen, we've heard from Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert, and now we're here at the Missy Hyatt home to speak with her. Me too, Jim Ross, John Tatum, Hollywood John Tatum. Hollywood John Tatum is here as well, quite obviously, and uh, in the Missy Hyatt home, I do want to reiterate, but be that as it may, uh, the rumor going around has it that you have merged with Hot Stuff International. Is that true or not? Well, there's no rumor about it. It is fact. Now it is Hyatt and Hot Stuff. I mean, I have so much money, and Eddie Gilbert.